Hey everyone, this is Matt with Motion VFX, and we recently updated our M callout simple pack for DaVinci Resolve because we are receiving some reports from several users experiencing issues with the tracking data. So we went ahead and changed the way that these work and the workflow has slightly changed. So in this video, I'm gonna give you an updated workflow for how to track these titles over your footage. All right, so once you've updated your M callouts using the M installer application, and you can find them under the effects library under effects, motion VFX, and M callout simple to with all 50 text presets. Now these are effects, which means you could technically drop them directly onto your footage itself. But of course the in and out animations are gonna be anchored to the original in and out of your media. So if you want the maximum amount of control as far as timing goes, my advice is to use an adjustment clip. So I'm gonna go over here to effects. At the very top, I'm gonna to grab an adjustment clip and just layer it right over my footage. Now I'm gonna play through this and kind of choose where I want my title to exist. So let's maybe move this back a little bit earlier. And let's say we want this to last maybe about six and a half, seven seconds. I'm gonna cut it off right there. Okay, so let's go back into our M callout folder here and we can simply hover over each of these. Now you see how I have my adjustment clip selected. This means whenever I hover over, we can look at our title over a black background. If we want to look at this in context, we can simply select our footage here. And now whenever we hover over, it'll give me a preview of what this title will look like in context with our footage. So I'm just going to try number 16 here. So again, I'm going to drop this right onto my adjustment clip like this. Now over here in the inspector, as you can see, there are no longer any tracking controls directly here on the edit page. So with the new method that this works, it's a lot more stable, but we do have to go into the fusion page in order for this to work properly. So I'm going to go up right here and click on this little arrow that will take me into this adjustment clip inside of Fusion. So what I wanna do is actually add a tracker node right after my media in. So with my media in node selected, I can hit shift spacebar and search for tracker and hit enter. And this is going to add a tracker node right after the footage. Okay, so with my tracker node selected, I'm gonna hit one on the keyboard to send this over here in the left viewer. Okay, so with my tracker selected, I'm gonna grab this little handle on the corner and let's choose something in our scene that we wanna track. I might wanna track this mini boat out here. So we're just gonna center this right over that boat. And the smaller box is where it's gonna to attempt to track and the hyphenated larger box is the search region. So you wanna keep this kind of small because I don't want it to interfere with anything else. Okay, so I'm gonna go over here to the inspector and at the very top, I'm gonna to click on track forward from current time and that's going to go ahead and do its track and once that's done you can see i've got these dashes that go to the end of the comp so what i need to do now is go to the beginning where i started the track and track backwards so we're going to click on track reverse from current time okay so it looks like it did a pretty successful job and now what i can do is go into my m callout simple to preset right here and over here in the inspector i'm just going to untwirl the callout controls and under the center point, this is where the entire title gets placed. We can just right click right here and connect it to the tracker one path position. And so now if we play through that, you can see our title is sticking onto that tracker point. Cool. So let's quickly run through a couple of these settings. So up at the very top, we've got call out mode. So right now it's set to link, which will just track the entire title over our tracker point right here. We also have the option to do static. And with this option, our main title will stay static like the name suggests and the line will always point to the tracker point and our static title at the top. And when it's set to static, we also have a separate static point control here. So we could reposition this however we want to and it will stay in that position as the line tracks through the shot. And whenever it's set to link, we also have a link angle and the distance. So this is really the best way to control the position because as you can see, it also brings the line with it. Now if I come down to the next section, we also have content position X and Y, which feel like they're doing kind of the same thing without tracking the line with it. But as you can see, if I go too far, eventually this will get cut off because what's happening is this entire comp that the title is being drawn over is being tracked into our scene. So technically, See, if I lower the link distance far enough, you can see 
that's where this entire comp is getting cut off at. So really these content position controls are designed to give you more fine-tuned control over the title in relation to the line. So if you want to control the overall position, it's best to use the linked distance and link angle. So for example, we can put this up here. And if we want to adjust the position of the title in relationship to this line, we could just slide this over with the content position controls. So let's say I want to anchor this kind of to the bottom left corner like this. And then maybe we'll spin that angle so it's kind of vertical like this. Now coming down here we also have normal controls that you can adjust your title. You can change the font, all the usual stuff. We have two separate title controls for the two words that you see here. And then we also have subtitle controls which can be customized as well. We also have a background control so if it's kind of competing a little bit with the background you can toggle the background and maybe adjust the alpha a little bit if you want it a little transparent. So I'm gonna leave that background off for now. And down here, we also have controls for the line. So you could disable this if you need to. You could also change the color as well as the thickness. And you can double click any parameter to reset it to its default value. And we also have the track point control in the same kind of thing here. You can disable that. You can give it a different color if you want and we also have drop shadow. So we can kind of take this and make it a little bit less blurry. This is just another way to break up the composition so it's a little bit easier to read the text if you have kind of a busier background like I do here. Okay, so I'm gonna head back to the edit page and let's say I wanted to add multiple callouts in the same comp. Well, if I wanted everything to be timed the exact same way, I could actually apply two different titles on the same adjustment clip. Now I want to show you a trick. So let's go with this number 10 here. Now instead of dragging this onto my adjustment clip, because when I do this, you can see over here under effects, now I have these two separate comps and I would technically need to track this again, which maybe I need to do that anyway if I want to highlight a different portion of the frame. But let's say I wanted to have the same tracking data for two different titles. Well, I'm gonna delete it from my inspector here on the edit page, and I'm just gonna remember number 10 here, and let's hop back into this Fusion comp. And I'm actually gonna open up the effects library here inside of Fusion, and go under Templates, Edit, because this is on the edit page, and then Effects, Motion VFX, Callouts, Simple 2, it's kinda of getting cut off there. And I can just grab number 10 here, and pop it right after our other callout title that we have in our comp. So with this, all I would need to do is come over here to the callouts and connect the center point to the same tracking data, just like this. And from here, we can go ahead and customize this any way we want. So you can see in this case, I might want the line to appear above my title. So again, under title controls, I might just adjust the Y position and let's move the entire thing up so that we're not too close to the bottom edge there. So that's just an easy way to use multiple callouts and kind of piggybacking off of the same tracking data without having to track multiple times. Now let's say I want to track two different titles and kind of have them slightly offset in time. So I'm going to grab an adjustment clip and let's just layer this over the first vehicle. So let's see, it will start about right here and play through here and we want the title to start to animate out maybe around here. And then I'm just going to hold Alt or Option if you're on a Mac and just grab this adjustment clip and duplicate it right above the other one. And let's do the same thing, but we're going to focus on the second vehicle. So I might want to move this a little bit later in time. And I'm just imagining that title maybe a little bit before that. And let's go into this first adjustment clip and I'm going to use preset number 39. And I'll just drop that right onto this adjustment clip, come up here and head into Fusion. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and add a tracker node after media in and let's press one again to put this in our left viewer and I'm going to grab this tracker and it looks like there's enough contrast on this car. And actually, if you come over here, you can choose to track based on certain channels. So it looks like the red channel is going to have the most contrast. Okay, and let's hit track forward and hope for the best. Okay, it kind of jumped a little bit. And there's another little jump there, but it looks like we might be able to fix those. So for now, I'm just going to go into my title under callout controls, center point, connect to tracker one, tracker path position. 
And what I could do now is open up the spline editor and I just want to look at my tracker. So if you click on the three dots right here and choose show only selected tools, this will only show you what you have selected. So I just want to look at the displacement path. Now, if I hit this button to fit to view, I can actually see it's kind of jagged right here as well as right there. So what I'll do is kind of zoom in towards the middle here and just delete these keyframes like this. And it's going to interpolate the motion right in between there. So let's see if that is smoother. Looks pretty good. And over here, it looks problematic again. So I'm going to go ahead and delete these keyframes and now it's a little bit too far ahead so what I could do is start a new track so this is where it starts to get off the rails so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, move this position and this won't move the track this is just moving the tracker but the point is still gonna track the same position so our title won't move even if we move this a little bit so I'm just going to readjust this tracker and under path center, we can set this to track center append. And now if I hit track, it's using a slightly different location to get a more accurate track. And I can see from the path here as well as the path on screen, it doesn't look like we have any jagged edges and it's looking a lot smoother. Okay, so I'm just gonna do some quick customization on this title. So we'll say first and then go down to the second controls and Maybe we'll type in place. Now it's a little hard to read, so we'll go ahead and just make this kind of like a bright yellow. And I can copy this code for later because I might want to use the same exact color for the other title. Now let's make this a little bit more bold and we can position this more over here. Okay, so let's go back over here to the edit page and repeat the same process for the second car. So I'm going to grab preset number 39, hop into the fusion page, and I'm just going to add a tracker after media in, load this up over here. Now you can see this one kind of starts a little bit out of frame. So I'm not sure how this is going to work. We'll see if we can track maybe the hood of the car like this. Let's try different channels and this car is black. So there's not really going to be any difference. We're just basically going off of luminance. So let's see how it does. And now right about here, it kind of gets thrown off the track. So what I'll do is just zoom out here and let's readjust maybe about right here. Track again. And now it looks like we've got a pretty smooth track. So I'm gonna go over to my title and same thing, we're gonna connect this to the tracker path position. Let's go ahead and customize our text again. And this time in the color, I'm just gonna paste that same yellow color that I have. And I think I choose regular. Oh yeah, and we also want to move this over a little bit. Cool, so let's go back to the edit page and let's see how it looks. All right, well that's just a quick walkthrough on the updated method for using our M Callouts Simple 2 title pack. You can see some of these even have like a little drop zone area here. I've just added a photo right there. And we have all the same 50 title designs that we had in the previous version, all with the same easy to understand controls, full customization. So you can really fine tune and customize every single element that you see in these minimalistic callouts. I hope you enjoy this new workflow, even though it does involve Fusion. The benefit is that there are tons more controls that you have inside Fusion. You can, of course, open up the spline editor and get a much better track than you ever could before on the edit page. That's all for now. Again, thanks for checking out this video. My name is Matt and I'll see you in the next one.